In this video, I want to walk you through creating a reusable component to provide player interaction to a variety of things in your game. The first thing we need to do is add two signals to our event controller. Interactable with two parameters, node and label, and then interaction with just node. If you don't already have an event controller, just right click on your root of your project and create a new script, call it event controller, and then in project, project settings, we're going to go to globals. If you're on an older version, it could be called auto loads. And then all you need to do is click on the folder to find the event controller script you created and enable it and make sure it's called event controller. In this project, I have a world scene, which is the root of all my levels. So all my different levels inherit from the world. So anything in this scene is inherited to the future levels. So what I'm going to do is create an interaction UI in the world scene so that any future levels I create will have this interaction scene. I'm just going to go ahead and click on world and I'm going to add a new node and it's going to be a canvas layer. I'm going to call this interact UI. Inside of here, I'm going to give it a margin container. Then inside the margin container, I'm going to give it a panel container. And then lastly, inside the panel container, I'm going to give it a label. It's going to name my label prompt. This is going to be the prompt that pops up for the player whenever they're next to something that they can interact with. And then we can go real quick and we can just style this. So on our margin container, I'm going to set the layout to bottom center. And then I'm going to come down to theme overrides, constants, and I'm just going to click all these. I can override the default margin. It's going to make this 16. Next, let's come to the panel container. And then same thing in the panel container. I'm going to come to theme overrides to give it some styling. I'm going to click new style box flat and then go ahead and click on it. I'm going to give it a background color. I'm going to give it a border width. I'm going to give it a border color. I'm going to give it a corner radius and expand margins. And then on our label, I'm just going to center it. Then I'm going to increase the font size. So same thing, theme overrides, font sizes. Click on the override, and then I'm going to give mine 36. Now if you want to see how this is going to look, we can just come into the text for the label, and then we can just type something. And then I'll give you an idea of how yours is going to look. You can see we kind of have a more transparent purple, and then a more solid border around it. We're actually going to use code to adjust the label, so I'm going to set this back to nothing. Let's go ahead and save this, and then we're going to attach a script to Interact UI. So make sure Interact UI is selected and click Attach Script. We're going to call it Interact UI and create. Our Interact UI script is pretty basic. We are setting a base command label of press E, which is going to be our Interact key. We're getting a reference to itself, and then we're getting a reference to our prompt label. On Ready, by default, we're going to hide the UI which is just going to hide this interact UI because we're not going to show it if the player isn't able to interact with something. Then we're going to connect to our interactable signal from our event controller. And from here, we're going to call on interactable. So for our on interactable, we're getting past a node. This is the node that has entered the area of the interactable. And then a label that's coming from the interactable that's going to be appended to our base command label, press E. So it'll be press E to pick up or press E to open or whatever you want it to be. And then we're simply just doing a check to make sure that a node has entered the area. And then it's going to set it to be visible. And then it's going to update the prompt text to be the basic command label plus whatever you want the interactable to say. If there is no node, we are sending the UI back to invisible. Next, let's create our interactable scene. So go ahead and click the plus icon. Then we're going to click Other Node, and it's going to be on Area 2D. And then inside of our Area 2D, we're going to add a collision shape. I'm going to change my Area 2D to Interactable. So this is the node we're going to attach to any scene that we want the player to be able to interact with. So it could be an NPC, an enemy, a door, or an item, or a sign, or anything. For the collision shape, I'm just going to set it as a rectangle. I'm just going to leave it the default size. It can always be adjusted based on the scene we attach to. Now let's go ahead and save this. And you can save it wherever you want. It's going to be interactable scene. And then next we need to attach a script to our interactable. So we'll click attach script. In our interactable script, we're given a class name of interactable. We have an export variable for label. We have a getter and setter for setting whether the player can interact or not, which is a Boolean. 
And if you come to the bottom of the script, those functions are defined at the bottom, which in this case are just flipping the can interact Boolean back to true and false. In the ready function, we are just connecting to the body entered and body exited signals, and we're calling the associated functions with those. In the on body entered, we're checking if the body is the player. If in your player script, you do not define the class name as player, you could also create a group for the player and check if the body is in that group. If the body that entered the interactable area 2D is the player, we're going to emit the interactable signal and we're going to pass the body, which in this case is the player, and then the label, which is this label defined at the top as our export variable. We're going to set can interact to true. On body exit, we're also going to do the same check that the body is the player, and then we're also going to emit the interactable signal, but this time passing null instead of the body. If you remember in our interact UI script, when node is null, it's setting the UI back to invisible. And then we're going to set can interact to false. In our input function, we're going to check if the action pressed is interact and if the player can interact. We're then going to get the parent. If there is a parent to this node, we are going to emit the interaction signal and we're going to pass the parent. So back in our event controller, we created an interactable and an interaction. This time we're passing the interaction signal and we're passing it with the parent node. So that is all we need to do to set up our reusable interaction for our player. Now let's implement this. Okay, so in my game here, I have a sign scene and a cookie scene, and I want the player to be able to interact with these two things. For the sign, I want them to be able to read this sign and the message pop up. And then for the cookie, I want them to be able to pick it up. So all we need to do is come to the root of your scene, and we're going to click this link icon to instantiate a child scene, and we're going to look for our interactable scene. And as you can see, the Area 2D has already been added. And if you want, you can make it bigger depending on the object it's around. And you can resize it to whatever size you need for this scene. And then save that. And we need to attach a script to our sign. And then in our scene for the sign, click on Interactable. And if you remember, we have an export variable label. So for each scene that we're attaching this Interactable to, we can provide the message that we want to tell the player. So it'll be press E and then whatever you want. So in this case, it's going to be press E and we'll say to read. In our sign script, we have a reference to our message that we want to show when the player interacts with the sign. And then on ready, we're going to make sure the message by default is invisible. And we're going to connect to the interaction signal. When the interaction signal is received, we're going to call on interaction. We're going to check that the node is itself. And if you remember in the interactable script, we are passing the parent. So the only one who should receive the signal for each interactable is the parent of that interactable. When the signal is received, we're going to set the message to visible, and we're going to emit the interactable signal with null. This is where you would do the logic for whatever you want this scene to do when the player interacts with it. Each scene will be in charge of what happens when the player interacts with it. In this case, I'm just going to set the message to true, and then I'm going to emit the interactable signal with null, which will hide the prompt again. And let's do one more example before I demo this. Let's go to our cookie. The same thing, click on the link, attach our interactable, and then make sure interactable is selected and we gotta provide a label again. In this case, it's an item we want the player to be able to pick up. So we'll just do we'll just do to pick up. And like before, we gotta create a script for the parent, because the parent is the one who's gonna decide what action takes place when the player interacts with it. Like before, we're connecting to the interaction signal, and then we're checking if the node that is passed is itself. We're just going to remove the item from the scene tree. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to take this system and create an inventory controller. Last thing we need to do is create a key so we can interact. So go to Project, Project Settings, go to Input Map, and we're just going to add an interact input. I'm just going to set it to E. So now we can run this and show you what this looks like. So if we come over to the cookie, press E to pick up, and the cookie is removed from the scene, then we can press E to read. Well, I suppose.